Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today we're gonna take a look at the brand new MVSX home arcade cabinet from a company called Unico. And full disclosure, this was sent to me for review by the company, however, nobody's paying me for this, and actually when my video goes live, I will be forwarding it on to another YouTuber for their channel so that they can also give their opinion on it. And so what is this thing? Well, as you can see, it is a slightly smaller version of the classic Neo Geo MVS unit that you would play back in the 90s. And for this review, they've only sent me the bar top version of it, but they do also sell the stand that you can put it on if that's what you prefer. And what's nice is that it's designed to sit right next to all of those arcade one-ups if you happen to be building out a small game room with those. Now this thing ain't cheap at $450 just for the bar top version, which I have right here. I think a lot of people are probably gonna want that base. They do sell a package for $500 that also includes that. But it does come with 50 classic Neo Geo games, although it definitely leans heavily on the fighting games. We're gonna get to that. And when it came time for me to do this video, I reached out to my friend Kinsey and her boyfriend Tony to help me with this and really give me their opinions on it because well, they own an original MVS. It's sitting in their living room and they play it all the time. So I couldn't think of anybody better to sit down on this newer version and really compare it and see what, you know, what they think. And so those 50 games included are shown on the screen here as I'm scrolling through the menu. But as you see, there are 10 King of Fighters games. There are six Metal Slugs. There are also six uh, Samurai Showdowns. There's a bunch of Fatal Fury games that you would obviously expect to see. Uh, a couple World Heroes games, Art of Fighting games. Uh, there's a couple sports games as well. So, uh, and again, you see all of them right here. But let's go ahead and walk around the unit here and talk about what's going on. And starting with the light up marquee, which looks fantastic. The light level is very even. There's no shadows or anything like that. It looks great. And it comes with a really nice 17 inch monitor with a really nice viewing angle. You see it as I'm walking around Kinsey and Tony as they're playing games here, that the viewing angle is very wide. It's also running at a display resolution of 1280 by 1024. And there are some video options that you can mess around with in the menu, and we'll get to that in a bit here. But uh, just know that if you prefer pixel perfect, there's that, there's also scan lines and a couple other options. And I asked Tony and Kinsey what they thought about it and they really liked it. So it's a very nice looking monitor. It plays games very well. By the way, I should probably mention that normally I would try to directly capture gameplay footage in these types of reviews. However, uh, this unit does not have a video out and so I can't really capture them at all other than just pointing the camera at the screen as you see right here. So uh, because of that, just know that you know, my camera and most cameras will never do it justice, you know, capturing the gameplay. It'll look much better when it's actually you sitting in front of the unit. So just keep that in mind. Looking at the buttons on the top row there, you have left player start, options and back. Uh, that is used both bringing up options at the main menu as well as in games. Uh, select game is also to put in a quarter. And then you have, of course, the right start. Notice those little uh, red LEDs there. Those are not coin or player ads. They're actually just simply when you are moving around in the main menu. So it's kind of almost for show, but they still look pretty cool. And then you have a volume knob on the right, which is tied to the front forward facing speakers there which actually sound pretty loud. Check it out. Now I've heard other reviewers say that these speakers are not quite as bassy as they would like. Maybe that's the case, but I didn't really think it was that big of a problem. And again, it's definitely plenty loud. And then below that you have player one and player two with bat style joysticks and also uh, somewhat of a traditional MVS button layout, although you'll notice that there are two extra white buttons there. Now, I asked the company what those are for, and they were very non-committal. Uh, most people believe that they will eventually, if they can get the licensing, put out other games, maybe other systems on here. And so that is potentially what those extra buttons would be used for. By the way, I did get a little bit of feedback from both Kinsey and Tony when using those joysticks. Now they liked them. However, they did notice that they're not quite as tight 
as the ones on the real MVS. It was just something that they noticed, you know, from years of playing an original piece of hardware, an original joysticks, and they didn't say that it was necessarily bad. It was just a difference that they, you know, almost immediately felt, and they still self-center just fine, but be aware the feel compared to a real system might be just a little bit off. They did, however, really like the buttons compared to the original. They're concave, the travel, the clickiness of them. Uh, they liked them quite a bit. Now I'm being told that these are not the high-end buttons that a lot of arcade enthusiasts would use, but they are a nice sort of knockoff version of that, um, probably to keep costs down a little bit. And I assume that, you know, if you are a connoisseur of arcade buttons and joysticks, then you could probably swap out and put your own in there, maybe higher quality, more expensive ones, if that's what you wanna do. But yeah, all three of us played this review unit over the last couple days, many different games, and had no problems with the joystick or buttons at all. And by the way, we didn't experience any noticeable input lag either. Obviously, this was probably using some sort of emulation. However, I can't open the back. That is one of the review stipulations that they have for these review units because they're gonna be bouncing around between different YouTubers. They don't want us going in there uh, messing around with the internals just yet. And so uh, I've been told that it has a custom printed circuit board and it, its own operating system. And they've done a lot of testing with lag and they haven't noticed anything you know, significant either. So that's a good thing. Going into the main menu, you have language settings. Underneath that, you have game modes and you can choose between whether you wanna play the MVS version or the AES version of a game. Under game image, you have a bunch of options. Now by default, it does pixel scaling, which is essentially pixel perfect mode. You can also enable smooth scaling, which is the artificial smoothing of pixels, which some people like, other people not so much. And then there are three different types of scan lines. You have horizontal, vertical, and then check this out, 40 degree scan lines, which is basically diagonal scan lines. I don't think I've ever seen that before. However, for this video, I'm primarily just gonna leave it on pixel scaling because again, it's kind of hard to pick up scan lines when you're pointing a camera at the screen. And then below that under system, there is a factory reset option if you need it, as well as a system update where you can update the firmware as they release them. There is a USB port in the back if you need to do it. And I assume if they do end up releasing new games for this, well, that's where you would do it. And then when you're in a game, you can hit options and that's where you exit a game. You can do save states. You can also change the controller layout, both for player one and player two. Also change the individual image options. And then some games have a violence option. So here you see Metal Slug. This is with violence turned off. And then you go into the menu and you enable it. And then, well, you get the blood. By the way, I know some people have asked if it saves your high scores when you exit. And as you see here, it'll prompt you to save the high score. And then when you restart it, it'll be there. So uh, whoever gets this unit next, will see that there is a Metal Jesus Rocks high score there. And I wanna mention it's got some nice weight to it coming in at around 28 pounds. And for the most part, it doesn't slide around on my bar top. You know, both myself as well as Tony and Kinsey were playing it, getting in some epic battles. Um, and yeah, it doesn't slide around that much. And you know, if it did, you could always put a mat underneath it and I think it'd be just fine. And so what don't I like about it? Well, you know, obviously coming in at $450, that's not cheap, but I do feel like it is a good value if you like the games that are included on it. Cause you know, remember the arcade one-ups for the most part are probably what, $300, you know, when they first ship out and they come with maybe four games on them. Well, this one's 450 and it comes with 50 games on it. So again, that's a lot of games packed onto this thing. However, at least for me personally, well, I'm not exactly crazy about all of those fighting games. I think it could really have been scaled down to maybe, you know, 10 fighting games and had more shooters on there. Maybe some more puzzle games I think would have been really cool. You know, I know that it, it all really comes down to a licensing thing and trying to keep costs down. And, you know, I'm sure they probably all got those King of Fighter games, you know, one big licensing package, you know, probably save them some money. But I guess that's my biggest thing is that I really would only play probably maybe five games on this myself personally. But, you know, obviously a lot of people out there love fighting games. That's kind of what the system's known for. And so maybe I'm in the minority there. 
Now, if you wanna learn more about this, I'll put a link down to the manufacturer's website in the video description below, as well as to Amazon, where they are currently selling them. But overall, I really like this thing. It's the perfect size and fit for my bar. I probably wouldn't even buy the base for it because again, just having it sitting on my bar, when people come up, they can just walk up to it and uh, just have a ton of fun playing those games. Again, I do wish it had a little bit more variety in the games. I think if it had a couple shooters or puzzle games, like I mentioned, I think it, for me personally, it would have just been perfect. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you interested in one? Are you going to buy one for your game room? Let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.